Hey guys, so I've had a few requests on how to remove a monitor chassis, so stay tuned and we'll show you. Alright guys, so the holiday season is in full effect. Did everybody have a good Thanksgiving? I know I sure did. Today I wanted to shoot a quick video and tell you how to remove the monitor chassis out of a monitor. In today's example, we're going to use this game right here. It's just a standard MAME cabinet. It has a Wells Gardner 2574 monitor. So let me set the camera up on a tripod and we'll get started. So let's take the back door off of our cabinet. Alright, so you can see our monitor back here. This again is a Wells Gardner 2574 monitor. So there's a couple things that you want to make sure that you do. You definitely want to unplug your game and make sure the power is turned off. So we're going to turn our power off and we're going to unplug our game. Very, very important guys. Let me get this camera in a little bit closer so you can see what we are doing here. All right. I think that's pretty good. All right, so first and foremost, this is your flyback here. And you want to discharge your flyback. This is the anode lead that goes up to the tube. So you want to discharge that. So the proper way to do that is to, if you have one of these, this is basically a, a um, high voltage discharge probe. You can buy these online. If you don't have one, you can also do a screwdriver and you can put an alligator lead onto your screwdriver and you can hook your lead up to the ground and slide your flat blade underneath the suction cup. I don't know if you can see that. Let's, let's move this down a little bit here. You can see a little bit better here. Okay, that's better. Right there. So up here, you can see there's the suction cup. So that's where you're gonna discharge your monitor from, from the end of that lead there on that suction cup. So if you don't have the discharge probe, then again you can use a flat blade screwdriver. So in our case we have the probe. Now let me tell you too, a lot of the newer monitors self-discharge. So this one may not have anything, any voltage or current underneath here, but we're going to go ahead and do this to be safe. So here we go, we're grounded here. All right, I don't know if you can see the, the um, meter here, but this one doesn't have any voltage on it because it's auto discharged. So we're gonna double check there, make sure we're... Okay, you always wanna be very safe when you do that. And again, our game is unplugged and turned off. Very, very important. So the next thing we wanna do is we're gonna reach our hand up here And we're going to take this suction cup off. And the way to do that is basically there's a little, there's two little, and you see that there's two little wires there. You just kind of pinch them together and pull the suction cup out. So once you have that done, just let that fall to the side there. And then we're going to unplug the you can do this first, I guess, but our machine's off anyways. But this is your your power to the uh, chassis here, so that's unhooked. Now the neck board here, very carefully, most of the time they have a piece of cardboard around the back. This one doesn't, it's probably been serviced before. But this neck board, you just want to take both hands and pull straight out on it and kind of wiggle. Just very carefully. 
they slide out of these pins so you can see that. Now on the neck board, there's two leads, the red and in the ground over here obviously. So we want to go ahead and take, pull the red wire off, it just pulls straight up, and then pull the ground off. And these two pins are different sizes, so they can't get put on backwards once, they, once you're done and you're putting your chassis back in. So these other two leads will stay with the chassis. There's your um, your cable to the uh, monitor chassis, and then your um, the other end of your um, for your neck, your power lead to the neck here. But those will stay because typically when you send your chassis in for repair, you want to include the neck board. These color drivers here are a very common problem, and that could be part of the problem why your monitor is not functioning as it should. So this one doesn't look too bad. The neck board doesn't. So after that, then you've got your this black wire here. This is your degaussing coil here. That plugs into the chassis. Just a simple plug. Just pull that straight up. We're going to hop over to the other side here. And this is your video cable from your, your game PCB. So we're going to just pull that straight up. That's your video cable. And then you've got your your color drivers here. You got this plug on the right here. This has got the green and yellow wire. And then this one's one of them's your vertical, one of them's your horizontal. And then this other one here in the middle, if you can see that, this one's got a red and a blue. So we're going to pull that out also. So that basically disconnects the tube from your monitor chassis. And if you see this wire here, this has been, somebody's obviously done some work here because it's got a, a crimp connector on here. So they've probably replaced the end here, this plug maybe, or, or maybe you have changed the flyback, I'm not sure, whatever they've done at one point. But once you have everything disconnected, so again, you've got your degaussing ring plug, you've got your anode cup from the tube. And you've got your color, horizontal and vertical. And then you've got your ground wire here that goes to the neck board. So once you have all those disconnected, then you're going to grab your screwdriver. Typically the monitors have either two or four bolts. This one here has two bolts that hold the chassis down to the frame. There's the first one. The second one is over here. All right. Now the back side is just hooked into these little tabs. So this chassis will come right out after we've undone our two bolts. So you can just lift this guy right out. Very simple. Make sure you don't get your remote board line snagged in the bottom of the cabinet. Sometimes this board here is mounted to the side of your cabinet or down here on your um, the mount for your PCB board or anything like that. So make sure you unhook that and take this with you. So this is what you'll mail out, guys. So you got your neck board. This is very important to include this to any repair place you take your board to. This is your anode cup again. You have your you have your neck board, all this stuff. Just kind of set all this together. And then you're going to wrap this up. Bubble wrap. And send it right off. Very simple, guys. So now when you put it back in, let's say you've done your repairs. This chassis here may need some work. I'm not going to do that in this video, but you can kind of see on the back side of this chassis. It's got... Um, a couple jump traces here so they've obviously done some work to it and this monitor actually has a small glitch in it so it probably needs to be serviced but again that'll be another video 
So we're going to put this chassis back in to show you that, just to do a recap. So when you set this back in here, make sure you set it back in the way you had taken it out. Your flyback always goes to the back of the cabinet here. This is your flyback. So make sure that goes to the back of the cabinet. Make sure you're not sitting on top of any of your wires. All right. So we're going to put our bolts back in. Just like you took it out. It's kind of a wash, rinse, and repeat type deal. So let's get our... I can get my hands here to function. I'm going to put our... chassis bolts back in. There's two of them on this one. Again, you, your chassis will have two bolts also, maybe four. Alright. So there's one. Line that guy back up. Now there's no order that you have to do these in. It's just whatever you want, whichever way you want to do it. You just want to make sure you get everything plugged back in. So in, next year I'm going to plug in my video cable. That snaps right on there. There's only one way that can go on there. I'm going to plug in my two leads to my neck board here, the red. And then the black one, let's see wherever that one went. All right. So that's in there. Now I've got my two leads here. So we're going to plug these guys back in. Now we're going to slide our neck board back on. So again, line this up. There's only one way this will fit on there. And generally, your driver, your color driver adjustments are on the top, generally. But anyways, there's a cutout, so this can only fit one way. So we're going to put this on there. You'll feel it kind of slide into place and just give it a nice push onto your, the back of your uh, tube there. We're going to plug in our degaussing ring, the black plug here, and we're going to slide our cup back on here. So you'll kind of fold this back, give these guys a little squeeze, and push them down on there just like so. And always last, I plug in my my power here to the monitor chassis. Make sure your neck board here or your your uh, remote board here for your adjustments is not pinned underneath your chassis or or laying on anything. Typically these are in a little holder that's on the side of your cabinet. So make sure that this is out of the way of everything and let's turn our machine back on here. Okay, I plugged it in. Okay. All right. So let's go around the front of the cabinet here and see what we got. So guys, our monitor is back up and running, as you can see there. Hope you have found this information useful. And stay tuned, guys, because we got a lot of cool stuff coming up. Check this guy out. This is a Fix-It Felix Jr. machine. We're working on this right now. You can see the computer PCB down in there. And we're going to shoot a video about this machine very soon. Also, we've got our multi-fighter pedestal cabinets here. 
These will basically have joysticks and buttons for two players and a trackball for Golden Tee. They have an HDMI plug in the back and they'll hook up to any size TV that you desire. Also, I wanted to let you know that if you want to send a viewer email, please send that to arcade911 at comcast.net. And guys, check us out on Facebook. And hit the subscribe and like button, please. And remember, guys, game, not over.